coming to you from digital address GA0992539, live on GSTV channel 421 and GoTV channel 144. Now, today marks day three of the Ayawa So West Wogan Commission of Inquiry into violence that characterized the by election on January 31. So far, the Minister of Interior, Minister of State in charge of national security, and the Minister for National Security, as well as some top police officers, including the Director General of Operations at the police headquarters and the East Legon Police Commander, DCOP George Alex Mensa, uh, said when it comes to election matters, all the various security forces that constitute the election tax force fall under the command of the police. I should tell you that the, the Secretariat, another Security Council, evidence in this very room that those men, at least some of them, about 25 of them, were members of the SWAT team of the police. Would you be surprised? I'll be surprised. Now, has the fact that they were using a police vehicle also come to your attention? Yes, my lord. Have you subsequently sought to investigate as to how they came across or they came by the vehicle? No, my lord. What I've found out is that that vehicle is not part of the vehicles under my command. Um, is there any reason for that belief? Lord, the belief referring to... I mean, you are very sure that that vehicle is not part of your fleet. Yes, my Lord. Yes, and I'm asking you, what informs that? What makes you so sure? Because that I know the fleet of vehicles under the National Operations Department. And that vehicle um, is not part of it. Very well. Could you give us specifics? What about that vehicle makes you see so confidently that it's not part of your fleet. My Lord, the National Operations Department has never used that kind of vehicle before. Never since I took over, I've never seen that vehicle at the National Operations Department. If you say kind, are you referring to the make? The make. Uh, so DS DSP George Asari, who heads the East Legon District Command, reviewed he was left out of the entire planning and execution of the security operation concerning the election, adding he complained uh, but was told not to worry. Let's listen to excerpts of his testimony before the commission on Friday. Ideally, uh, the district commander in whose jurisdiction the by-election is supposed to be held should be part of the exercise but in my case that did not happen and is there any reason why that did not happen my lord this question can best be answered by the regional commander and the regional operational team headed by chief subtenant quasi for in this particular instance I was of the view that who, uh, the, the authorities, the regional command, would allow the normal system to operate. But this time round, it did not happen to the extent that I complained that why is it that as a district officer uh, where a by-election is, is going to be held, I have been asked to stay aside, say that my command car, my command car was taken away from me by the regional commander that uh, I should let my driver bring the pickup to Accra region.
Also, you heard the, uh, his testimony on Friday, but Vice President of Policy Think Tank, Humani Africa, says testimonies given by police heads at the uh, Emil Schott Commission smacks of eternal police dysfunction. He believes that the statements made by Police Director of Operations and the East Legon Police Commander, who you just heard at the Commission on Friday, indicate that things are clearly falling apart. There's more in the following report. Mr. Bentel's comments come after two days of sitting of the Justice Emil Shortlet Commission taxed by President Okufuado to investigate the violence that occurred during the Ayawaso West Wagonba elections on January 31. He says the police and national security officials seem to contradict each other in their accounts to the commission. Mr. Bentel described the development as worrying. I detect internal police dysfunction. You saw the East Legon man talking and the others who came, that's one. And then I said, there is also a breakdown of the command and control chain. This is what I detect. No wild security experience. Just common sense and observation, we are making this point, all of us. Then I've written something said that command and control should never be broken because if you do that, then you have what he's talking about. Let me say it in ordinary terms, what it means. If you are going in a situation like this, everybody must know what everybody is doing, okay? Yeah. We know it is never legal for anybody to be maxed, except that person is under a very serious, clear command and control arrangement in very limited situations where there can be no ambiguity. Why? Why? Because, just like you said, tomorrow it can be Flagstaff House, it can be Jubilee House, it can be Parliament House, it can be any by-election. And then somebody brands any pickup, SWAT, and then masked men just arrive there. Because of what has happened, we would all assume they are coming from the national security system. They will kill everybody and drive away, and nobody will touch them. This is where the problem is. When you don't have this coherent command and control arrangement and you have situations like this and people go unchallenged, we could easily create that gap where terrorists, ordinary people, butchers, criminals can just do us a lot of harm. Also on the program was the executive director of the Media Foundation for West Africa, Suleiman Braima, who said providing the commission with factual evidence is key to the outcome of their work. At this stage, it's important to not attempt to confuse the public. And therefore, uh, our way of perhaps helping the commission and the ongoing processes is to be factual mm. and to say that, well, this is what the former president has said. Mm. I, have, I have not had any official investigative report that confirms what has been said so far. But as Kofi said, I think that, and as you have said, this is incredibly important for the commission's work. Let it be submitted and be proven mm. that indeed these cars belong to the candidate of the MPP. Or that, have, or that this was a coincidental meeting that she got there at the same time the group also exactly. got there. That, exactly. That's, that also, also, that's possible. also a possibility. The commission will continue sitting on Monday. There have been quite some interesting analysis uh, coming from this commission's sitting. Uh, Michael E. Kujo Yangsen joins me in the studio with uh, some more on the recap. Now, Kujo, you've been ob observing uh, this sitting since it began, uh, public hearing, let me say, since it began. And... This is just day three. Day two was quite revealing. I must agree with you. Uh, quite a lot came out, uh, not just on day two, but on day one as well. And then we've started to see uh, what the shape of our security arrangements are on a, on a regular day. Uh, because um, f at least from the perspective of national security, according to what they're telling us in this, um, uh, in this commission, that was a regular day for them. They were following up on something they had been investigating for quite a while. And so on a regular day, they send out a SWAT team to go and mm. uh, intercept some oh. weapons. They said they received some intel. That's right. Uh, after 24 hours of surveillance of a particular location, they sent out a team to go and intercept some weapons. Uh, the fact that this was happening on a day that an election was going on was not particularly um, uh, the focus of, of their mission. Uh, but you start to see how the police and national security perhaps are not communicating as well as you would have imagined. 
imagined. Uh, and, uh, the, uh, and the police within themselves are also uh, facing their own uh, communication and hierarchical problems. You heard the, the uh, district commander talk about how Legal. he appeared to be uh, sidelined in the arrangements for the by-election in, uh, you know, in his district. Uh, you also hear the, the, com uh, the director the general of police operations yeah. talking about how he was unaware of anything that the national security were doing, even though it included members of the police force mm. who had been seconded mm. to um, this national security SWAT team. Mm. So it brings up a lot of questions, the revelations uh, yeah, and, and, and quite a and, number and, of and, and just on that point, we heard the national security minister explain how that was possible mm -hmm. uh, by saying that uh, when, the, when, the, when the unit is attached to the national security, they're mm. no longer under the direct supervision or command of the mm -hmm. director of operations. But interesting revelations there. Mm. Uh, we're looking forward to hear from DSP Samuel Kojo Azugu. He's commander of the SWAT team. A lot mm. of issues have come up from there. And we're also expecting some journalists as well to appear yep. and share with the commission what they observe. Let's, let's now take you uh, to the Osu Castle and hear DSP Samuel Kojo Azugu as he gives his testimony to the commission. Ghana Police Service, but pay my day-to-day -day reportage accountab accountability. I account to the Director of General Operations, the Director of Operations National Security, who in turn gives Director General Operations Accra Police Headquarters any information from our end. Who writes annual reports on these police officers on secondment? And we are limiting ourselves to the SWAT team. My Lord, it is me, the commander. Very well. Um, the civilian element, do they wear any particular uniform? My Lord, um, they have black T-shirts. They wear black T-shirts. Especially when we are going for operations, they wear black t-shirts. Very well. DSP. You know, we recently had a by-election at Ayawasu West Wagon constituency. Yes, my lord. Did you personally, as the commander of the SWAT team, play any role? Yes, my lord. On that day, I was in charge of the national security team that set out to go and do confidence building and general patrols. So then, you are telling this commission that the national security was part, official, of the election task force for the day. Is that what you are saying? No, my lord. We, the national security was having a special assignment that is to go on confidence building patrols and also lay surveillance on particular areas which have come to the notice of national security. Now, on the question of confidence building, what exactly were you supposed to do and what did you do? Yes, um, well, confidence building was, we, we just set out from our location and drove through some of the streets leading to the constituency. And that constitutes confidence building, is that it? Yes, please. You didn't need to talk to anybody? To just drive around? Y yes, please. Now, have you also heard about a shooting incident near one of the polling stations in the to be specific, um, La Baoleshi 
polling station. Yes, my lord. Have you also heard about a situation in which a member of parliament was said to have been assaulted by a person believed to be a national security operative? Yes, my lord, it has come to my notice. How did it come to your notice? Um, through the social media. So then, officially, there hasn't been any report to you? There's, there's a report. Oh, my Lord, um, on this issue, I, 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 did, I was there, but I did not see it physically with my eyes because of the location of my vehicle. The position of my vehicle at that particular moment, I could <laughs> not... So it was through the audiovisuals that I saw that I, I, I saw that um, one of my boys allegedly assaulted. The okay. So then, you have watched the video. Yes. From your own account. Yes, my lord. You have even stated that it was done by one of your boys. Yes, my lord. And you have been able to identify that person. Yes, my lord. Are you ready to give his name to the commission? Um, my lord, I'll give it to the commission, but in camera. No yes. problem. We'll give you a paper to write that down. Yes, Very my lord. Well. Now, have you subsequently investigated that matter? Yes, my lord. We, we are on it. The National Security Council Administration is on it. They are, because the police, the Ghana police headquarters, CID has come in, so they've taken up and uh, doing the necessary investigations. This operative, is he a police officer? It's a, it's a, it's a, a civilian counterpart. The operative is yeah. an, well, an operative. Civilian operatives. Yes, please. Okay, so as you sit here, you wouldn't be able to tell the commission what caused the incident. Is that what it is? Yes, my lord. You haven't had any interactions with him? Or you did not see the need to? So my lord, um, what that particular operative told me, mm. I can give it to the commission in camera because it is in bad taste what he said the Honorable MP told him. And uh, my Lord, it's, it, it will not be palatable for me to mention it uh, to the whole, whole country. Yes, me. Yes, my lord. 
unfortunately, this commission is not immune to profanity or anything else. So then, DSP. Yes, my lord. We are going to allow you to write the name of the perpetrator on paper. Yes, my lord. But as to the circumstances that led to the assault, which you are aware of, we don't see any national security um, matter in that. You should be able to tell us what led to the assault. Yes, my lord, with all due respect, um, it is not of national security, but um, national co cohesion, national unity. Because what he told me, that the MP told him, even as we are here, maybe if I say it, the MP may be attacked by somebody, especially when I mention it live. You know, so that's why I, I plead on your honor to let me give it to you in camera so that in subsequent sittings, if, you know, it can come out fine. But I do, uh, my Lord, I don't want to be the carrier of a uh, 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 problem which will put this, may put this country in. All right. Um, can you write that on a piece of paper? And let's have a look at it before we, we go on. Yes, sir. Interesting uh, event uh, happening at the Osu Castle now. This is the third day of the hearing of the commission. And what's happening now is that DSP Samuel Kodro Azugu, who is commander of the SWAT unit National Security Security, is giving his testimony. At this point, the commission is reading what he claims to be some unpalatable words that MP Sam George said that caused the national security operative to assault him. And so um, I think the chairman of the commission is conferring with his uh, colleagues. Prior to this, there's um, been some sort of um, what's the word? But they've been trying to get him to to say those words, and they said the commission right, is not uh, immune to profanity. Let's listen yes, to them. Um, I would like you to make available the person whose name you have written on this piece of paper, person who yes, my, yes, my lord, assaulted the MP. 
Yes, my Lord. And make him available for us. Yes, my Lord. If need be, we'll take his evidence in camera. Yes, my Lord. Certain aspects of it we may take in camera. Yes, my Lord. Depending on the nature of the evidence he's coming to give. Yes, my Lord. Okay, so you may proceed. Yes, my Lord. Now, DSP, will you be positioned to know what action might have been taken against this operative who assaulted the member of parliament? Would you be in position to know? Uh, my lord, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, he has been sidelined for the meantime. He has been um, put aside, suspended from work in the meantime. All right, uh, thank you so much for staying on the news, uh, on the Joy News channel. This is News Desk, and we are bringing you live visuals from the Osu Castle, uh, the IRSO West Wogan Valence Commission of Inquiry. Which is interesting. Um, yeah. We are seeing some bits of pausing in this particular testimony, and we didn't see a lot of that yeah. in the previous um, 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 testimonies. But yeah. what's happening now is that we've heard from the chairman of the commission who asked DSP Azugo if he's willing to provide the perpetrator of St. George's assault and mm. he said he would do that and the chairman said well certain aspects may be taken in camera but Kujo is interesting when he was asked I'm talking about DSP Samuel Kujo Azugo to write what those unpalatable words he claims St. George said are the commission seemed to look through the, the details of it, but they didn't read it out to us. Does, yes, does that, that mean they agree? Well, that is the only uh, inference we can make, mm. that they perhaps don't feel that uh, it should be repeated in the public uh, hearing. But w I guess we will learn more mm -hmm. on the day that the individual whose name has been written appears before the commission. But we have to remember something. The question was about who assaulted Sam George. And the commander of the SWAT team has mentioned one name. But let's not forget, let's not forget that there were at least two people on camera who assaulted Sam George. The person who we saw slapping him and then further beating him and then someone who came from behind, also dressed up in the national security black t-shirt and khaki, who ran from behind mm. and also assaulted uh, some The first gentleman was in a black shirt and, mm -hmm. and a jeans trousers. That's if, correct. Yes, and we are told by DSP Azugu that he is a civilian operative. Right, or, which means he's not a, one of the policemen assigned exactly. to the SWAT team. Exactly. Uh, but you see, this is interesting because according to the commander, this civilian operative was, was told something. Uh, and when he heard that thing, he then slapped some George. Mm. But the question is, for the other individual who ran from behind, and we all saw him on the video running from behind and also assaulting some George, 
What did he hear? What was he told? What was his provocation? I hope that the committee will be interested in that as well, because these two incidents were quite obvious on the, in the video. Mm. Uh, and uh, it wasn't only one person that we saw assaulting Sam George. So uh, I'll be very keen to see how that particular aspect of the issue is resolved. But at the moment, it appears they are simply conferring to decide which aspect of his testimony should be uh, made public and which aspects perhaps should be protected uh, with an in-camera mm -hmm. hearing. Um, and he also mentioned DSP Kodro Azugu when asked how this came to his attention. Mm. He mentioned social media and his excuse was that the location of his vehicle made it um, quite difficult for him to have seen what had happened. Mm. But I think that the, the follow-up question or the question that will linger on a lot of minds is, at that point, when there was a bit of uh, a scuffle, or there was a bit mm. of chaos, what did he do then? Did he ask any questions then? And also, we didn't get an answer to the question on whether he had received an official report Absolutely. on, on the, uh, the Absolutely. issue of assault. That is what the commission was interested in. That's the question that the, um, the, the, the council asked. But his response um, suggested that, um, well, the, his, the way he had consumed the information about what happened was via social media, because mm -hmm. even though he was at the location, uh, he didn't have a line of sight ah, yes, of the event. Yes, my lord. I asked you about a shooting incident in what was said to be a house around the Oleshi area, and you said you knew about it. Am I right? Yes, my lord. How did this come to your notice? Um. I, w I was there. I witnessed it, my lord. You witnessed it. Now, you witnessed it in your capacity as what? As the commander who led the team to the area. Okay. Now, are you able to tell this commission where exactly that shooting incident took place? My lord, the shooting started from a compound house behind the polling station about 100 years away from the school building. DSP, if you say started from a compound house, what exactly are you saying? Be, um, I'm saying there was some shooting that attracted, there, there, was, a, there, there was a gunshot which attracted our attention from the main road. Whilst we were on the main road, we heard a gunshot and we moved there to ascertain what was going on. And that was where we saw that more gunshots were being fired from, from that direction, from the compound house. And by whom? I, I, I could not identify unknown persons. Now, if you say we, who are you referring to? Uh, my Lord, me and my team. You and your team? Yes, my Lord. How many personnel did you have on your team? We were 60 in number, my Lord. 60 in number. How many police men? 25 policemen. And I guess 35 civilian operatives. Am I right? You are correct, my lord. Okay. Now, what took you to the area? Uh, my lord, as already stated, I was given an information 
whilst we were setting off from our location, that there is an intel intelligence that um, there was a stockpiling of arms and ammunition in a particular area. So I should I should go to that particular area and make the necessary arrangement for deployment and possible search of the facility. So if I heard you right, you were there to make arrangements for deployment. No, 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 no sir. And possible search. Yeah, uh, my Lord, our presence there mm -hmm. was to position ourselves for me to be able to assess my deployment needs in order to know the number of people to place at each location before we move. Because our operations are said that before you go to a facility to conduct any search, we position the men at particular points where people may not, those coming in cannot come, those who are going out cannot go, to enable a successful uh, retrieval of any illicit item or weapons that you are looking for. Now, positioning of your men. Yes, please. As at the time of the incident, had you successfully positioned your men at these vantage points? Uh, my lord, uh, if you may allow me, I, when we got, we drove straight from the um, men passed some direction to Bawaleshi, to the school. When, when we approached there, we were in uh, 10 vehicles, a convoy of 10. And I was leading the convoy, the team. So my vehicle and the second vehicle behind me parked on the main street leading to the police station. Then we were directing, because it was a working day, that was the working day. So there was a lot of traffic on the road and our presence was hampering free flow of traffic. So we were doing the necessary arrangements to position our vehicles, then also um, continue with any further um, action that we wanted to do. So whilst making that are uh, traffic management, temporary traffic management, to allow free flow on the main street and also entrance to the school park. Um, we spotted a convoy of motorbikers. She can go on. Um, and they numbered about 15, 15 motorbikes with uh, some with three pylons some with one pylon, that is uh, passengers in our local balance. Some with one passenger, some with two passengers. And they were coming in a group on the street. So it aroused my curiosity. I said, let me verify what was going on. So when they approached, actually they didn't, the, the, the riders didn't know that we were there. As they approached, they realized that we were on the street. We were actually managing the traffic. But I saw three other vehicles, which were being escorted by those bikes. What happened? And those three vehicles came and parked. And the motorbikers, some of them disembarked from the motorbike. When the passengers from the vehicles came down, I realized that 
the first vehicle, um, Honorable Sam George, the MP for Ningo Prapram, was in the, uh, in the lead car. He, together with uh, one Agbesi Nochu, and the NDC Deputy National Women Organizer. Then another um, vehicle um, which was occupied by Honorable Ni Okovan Dapoy. I think he is his uh, 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 constituency. Uh -huh. Then another third Salunka. So when they came, I approached, you know, both the honourable MPs. You know, paid my courtesy, greeted them, welcomed them. From there, I, I, you know, confronted the bike, bike, bikers who had, you know, alighted from the motorbike. Bike. The rest of the motorbikes moved to the back. They all, you know, moved, uh, rode their motorbikes to the back of the building. So I asked those there that what were they coming to do here? And they told me they were coming to protect the ballot, which was apparently going on in the, uh, 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 at the school. Then I told them, my brothers, you can see from there that there are policemen, um, immigration. The, the, the state has made enough security over there, so there's no need for you to be present here. So please, leave. And saying this, saying this because their presence may also hamper our operations that we were, we were probably going to conduct on that day. And there was, they did not take lightly to that. And they, they started to banter with me. You know, even one of them, what are they, the uh, deputy NDC national women organizer, at the point took pictures of the the boys, the, my men, some of my men, and because she, you know, that day because the election she was not identified, so they approached her, you know, and said, "Why do you take pictures of her?" And it was a there was an altercation, so I came in. Honorable Kovandapoy came in. We solved that problem, and there was peace. All this while, I was insisting that those who were on the motorbike should leave the place. And eventually, they left, but also took the same direction, went back of the school building. When they went, not quite long, we heard a gunshot. That time, if you know the geography of the area, we were, I, I was actually at, on the, by my vehicle on the street. So it attracted my attention, and we moved quickly to that location to ascertain what was going on. Whilst we were moving, uh, Honorable Sam George also joined and was also running towards the place together with us. When we approached the place, the, we, we we did a turn and going towards the building, the building, we were met with hundreds of men throwing stones, pelting us with stones, amidst gunfire from the from the uh, from their back, you know, from apparently from the building behind them. So immediately, I asked my men to give a warning shot. So they fired the warning shot. This made them to retreat and started to run helter skelter. Some were able to run back into the compound where the gunshot was coming from. But the rest were unfortunate 
they could not because before they get they got there, the gate was locked. And all this while there was there was gunfire. There was gunfire. And at that particular moment, my concern was for the honorable MP because I could not see him again. I only saw him also moving towards that direction. But from there I did not see him again. So I was worried. You know, I said, what is going on? Because he can be hit by any, you know, friendly bullet or any, in, anybody at all can cause harm to him. And this will be a problem on security. So we decided, I asked them boys to arrest those who could not enter the compound and were trying to escape and run away. So we managed to arrest nine of them for them to help investigators to establish why that action. And some of them surrendered and they were taken to the vehicles. But some on their way decided to, you know, um, run away, put up, uh, um, decided to put up uh, resistance to their arrest. So they managed to, you know, um, shrug, shrug off the security men, decided to run, and the security men pounced on them. And that one, I, I agree that, uh, that one, my boys overreacted when they were re-arresting them. Then they put them, I made sure that they were arrested and we put them in the vehicles. So, there I place a call to my director that this is what has just happened. We could not, we, we, were, we were met with this challenge and so far we have arrested nine suspects. Then he told me to call Director General Operations Ghana Police Service. Then I called him. Then he directed me to send the arrested, arrested suspect to the East Legon Police Station. Are you done? Oh, go on. <clears throat> uh, yes. Um, I, want, I wanted to continue. Okay. Um, <clears throat> before, before you come to that, very well. Let me listen to what you have to say. What were you going to say? I know maybe you asked me because uh, uh, about the MPs issue. Um, <laughs> let's leave that one for now. Yes, sir. I'll come to that. Yes, sir. Let's stay at the scene of shooting. Yes, my lord. In the course of your evidence. Yes, my lord. You got to a point where you said all that while shootings were going on. What do you mean by that? Yes, sir. Uh, there were... There were Sporadic, there, there was sporadic shooting from from the other side. I, I, could not, I, I couldn't identify because the wall is is, is a well built compound with um, high wall. You know, well fenced. All the security um, measures have been put in place, so you cannot even enter, scale the wall without going through the main the, the main gate unless you use other means to go inside. Correct me if I'm wrong. So what you are saying is that in the course of your operations, there were gunshots coming from the compound. Is that what you are saying? Yes, my lord. And you also told the commission that um, your men, you asked your men to fire a gunshot. Yes, sir. And yes, they my lord. Did. yes, my lord. How many? Six rounds. Six my lord. Rounds. Yes, my lord. Okay. Has it come to your attention that at least one person sustained a gunshot wound to his leg? Has that come to your attention? Um, my Lord, I, I have not personally seen it, but I've seen it on, on the media, in the media, that 
it was a gunshot, but I cannot tell that it is a gunshot wound as I'm sitting here, my Lord. I cannot tell whether it's a gunshot wound. Very well. Now, there are also pictures of evidence of gunshot on a container. Have you seen that? Yes, my Lord. Would you be able to tell the commission as to where that came from? My Lord, I can't. I don't, I don't have any idea about those. Where exactly did your men fire their gunshot? Where? Where were they? I mean, their position when, in when, relation to the house. Yes, sir. When we were approaching the house, the crowd, they were, they were, the number was huge. Their number, I cannot, I cannot put uh, an estimation on the, their number. So immediately we turned, we, we made a turn and we were approaching the house. They were already coming. So when they saw us, they started throwing the stones. So there, it was just behind the school, just behind the school, we gave that warning shot. I asked them to give the warning shot. So they started to retreat and ran back to the compound house. And unfortunately, some of them, and all that while it, they, they was, we were hearing gunshots from that end. Some of them were able to enter the gate because they had not closed it. But by the time the rest, most of them got there, the gate was locked. So that was what even made us to get some of them to arrest them. Because if they had all entered inside, it means that we were going to use other means to, you know, get them. Very well. On the gunshot. Yes, my lord. There is also a video. Yes, my lord. In which you can hear over a dozen of gunshots. Yes, my lord. And there are a couple of media reportage. Yes, my lord. That are attributing that to your men. What do you have to say? My Lord, I cannot say anything to that video. DSP, I ask you once again. How many warning shots came from your men? And that's on record. My Lord, six. Now, the men you arrested, what did you do with them? My Lord, we, the, the, the directive from Director General Police, he said we should send them to the East Legon Police Station. Were any of them injured? My Lord, at a time that we sent them to the police station, I did not see any visible mark of injury. And none of them even complained to me that he was injured at that particular moment because from the location to the police station is not very far and we acted as quickly as possible because of the, the degeneration and the tension which was building up in the area because taking into consideration the election which was going on nearby we did not i did not want to you know cause any delays which will you know, cause disruption to activity around the area, which includes the election which was, which was taking place nearby. Okay. Now, you have indicated that your men somehow manhandled this man. Am I right? Have you said that today? I, 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 yes, with the hindsight of the video. Okay. Oh, the video. Are you telling the commission that you, as the commander of the day and present at the scene, did not see anything? Oh, my Lord, I, I'm saying that even the video confirms it, my Lord. No, I want you to tell me. Yes, my What Lord. do you say? Forget about videos. Let's stay with you. You yeah. are the commander of the SWAT team. On yes. the day you were present, yes, DSP, my Lord. how did your men handle these citizens of Ghana? Um, the, 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 it, was, it was not in the um, proper manner. 
they did not handle them in the, in the professional way, the way they were taught to. And by not handling them in a professional manner, what exactly are you saying? We need to know as a commission. Uh, um, based on that, we are we are we have um, in, initiated this reaction. Um, DSP, since you are struggling to tell us, let me help you. Yes, my lord. Did your men beat these people up? No, sir. They, uh, um, their, their idea of minimum force that we saw on TV was, you know, too much for all of us. You know, DSB. they were trying to. DSB. Minimum before force you, to Before you go them. on, before you go on, please. Let me remind you of your oath. Yes, my lord. Okay. We are not here to persecute anybody. Yes, my lord. The commission needs to get to the bottom of this. Yes, my lord. And we want you, as I told you, to be as candid as possible. Yes, my lord. Please. Yes, my lord. Tell the commission, what exactly did your men do to these people? Um, as, uh, uh, my lord, as I stated already, uh, when the nine pe persons were arrested, some of them surrounded peacefully and were taken to the vehicle, but some decided to run away from lawful arrest. And the boys pounced on them. And in the mood and the way they were handled, that's why I'm saying that it amounted to a subject of um, um, action against them. Now, would you be surprised if I should, for instance, tell you that some of these men were said to have evidence of assault, would you be surprised? Evidence of assault, as seen having been beaten, would you be surprised? My Lord, as, at what point, my Lord? From the police station. Oh, my Lord, yes, of course. My Lord, I, 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 I later got to know that some of them reported or showed marks of um, assault on them to the uh, Legon police. And you are not able to tell the commission as to how they came to have this evidence of assault. Is that what you're saying? As a commander on the day with your team, you arrested men. After arresting them, you took them to a police station. Subsequently, we've seen pictures or we've been given evidence that um, they had. In fact, some of them, we are told, or the commission is told, sustained cuts to their head. Would you be surprised? Uh, my Lord, as I, I, I already stated, as at the time I took them to the police station, I have not seen any mark on them. And none of them informed me that they were injured. My Lord. Would you also be surprised that I have seen here a picture of one of them with a blood-stained vest. Would that surprise you? No, my lord. That wouldn't surprise you? No. Yes, my lord. Is it therefore right for me to suggest to you that as at the time you were taking the man to the police station, he had that blood-stained shirt? Is that right? My lord. Um, I can easily identify that gentleman right. because after his arrest, he was wearing a white T-shirt. And I even interviewed him. That time, there was no stain in the singlet. But I believe for one reason or other, he used, later when we left, he used the, that singlet to, you know, wipe the blood that may be, be coming oozing from his cut, which I did not see. But at the time I took him to the police station, his singlet was not soaked in blood. Yes, please. Yes, my lord. How come you are so sure of the gentleman I'm referring to? Be because, my lord, you, he was wearing a white, later on I saw it on, in the media. 
I saw that particular gentleman in the media with blood. To be frank, when I saw the blood on him, I said, wow. Oh, so, sorry, am I... That's all right. That's all right. So I right. said, oh, and how come that this thing was there and I didn't see it? But I, I realized that because when you get a cut, maybe immediately the blood will not be oozing. But when you, you, you know, inter, uh, you, you disturb the cut, then it starts to ooze. I think that's why at that particular moment, you know, he, 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 we could not find the, the blood oozing for him to use the singlet to wipe it. That's my... Is there a possibility that the cut to his head might have come from the manhandling of your men? My Lord, so far as my men were the arresting officers, anything that happens to a suspect, you know, can be attributable to them. But it is up to um, the the victim to establish as to how how he came to sustain that injury, whether he fell over and hit his head against something, or whether one of my men used something on him, or any other means of uh, sustain, sustenance of injury, sustaining injuries. Okay. These men of yours, how were they dressed up on the day? Um, because it was a combined team, we had a police component and the national security component, a, 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 um, operatives component. The operatives were, the police were in police gear and the operatives were in black and brown trousers. DSP, if you say police gear, were they dressed like this gentleman sitting here? No, we have operational uniforms that um, we use when we embark on operations. And would you please describe to the commission what this operational uniform is? Yes, um, we have... The, the long boot with tucked in trousers over a blouse. Uh, we have something we call um, camouflage uniforms. We have a uh, long sleeve blouses over tucked in. And mostly our um, unit, we wear um, our trousers with which are tucked into the long boots with the other um, accoutrements like body armors, um, helmets, sometimes as the stretching demands, we put on other um, accoutrements which um, enhances the jobs. Because sometimes we go to the beach to lay siege. Sometimes you go, you will go and lay ambush for a particular um, assignment and mosquitoes and what have you, you fall prey to them and other writers. So based on the type of operation that we conduct, we take along and sometimes too, the rain will be at the mercy of the rain and we do all this Measures and put it, them on us, you know. As yes, we, let's stay on the day under reference. Yes, 31st my Lord. of January 2018. Yes, my Lord. At La Baoleshi. Yes, my Lord. What uniform were your men wearing? They were wearing the operational uniform, as I described to you, because um, we, 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 uh, the uniforms, we, where we are operating. Okay. Let me ask you again. We have all seen pictures, including the commissioners. Yes, my lord. Of some men dressed in brown khaki, trousers, 
black t-shirt with a vest, which is also brown, and somewhere and wearing a mask, yes, carrying ma weapons. Are these your men? Carrying weapons? In some of the pictures. Wow. Um, my Lord, on that particular day, the only people who were... Before you go there, are these your men? I, I've not seen those pictures, so I can't confirm a lot. Unfortunately, I don't have these pictures in colors, but then you can easily tell. My Lord, let the record reflect that the witness has been shown pictures of the men I'm referring to. Yes, this one. This one, I can confirm. Yeah, These are your men. Yes, please. Very well. Yes, my Lord. Thank you. What about that? Because it's black, black and white, and the, this one I can easily identify, but this one I cannot ascertain. Very well. But then for the record, you can tell that the picture I am showing you, even though it's black and white. Yes, my lord. They are your men. Yes, my lord. You can also say for the record that some of them are wearing helmets. Yes, my lord. Over mask. Yes, my lord. You can also say for the record that some of them, though they are not wearing helmets, Yes, my they Lord. are masked. Yes, my Lord. Now, talking about weapons, on this gentleman here standing by, uh, behind the car, what is hanging by his side? I can't ascertain because it's black and white. I can't ascertain. Very well. Now, you have told the commission yes, that your Lord. men fired gunshots. Yes, my Lord. But then you are doubting when I told you that they were carrying arms. Is that it? Yes, sir. Uh, um, my Lord, I said we issued arms to the police. And I even ordered them to give the warning shots. What about the civilian components? N nobody was issued the gun. Now, these men we see here, yes, my is Lord. there any, to the best of your knowledge, yes, my civilian Lord. component amongst them? At least you were with them on the day. Yes, my Lord. You set off together. Yes, my Lord. Yes. So tell the commission. Um, my Lord, I can't, I can't confirm from this picture because it's black and white very well yeah did any of the civilian component any member of the civilian component wear the apparel for the day which is the black t-shirt brown trousers brown vest and mask to the best of your knowledge yes my lord Did any of them carry guns? Oh, to the best of my knowledge, my Lord, none of them carried guns.
the Osu Castle, we can see the council to the commission trying to have some discussion uh, with the commissioners there. We're not too sure exactly what they're discussing, but Kojo, interesting testimony we've, we've had so far yes. from DSP Samuel Kojo Azugu. It's getting interesting by the minute. Absolutely. And um, I, I, I can imagine that a lot of people are glued to their TV and radio sets. Yes. And uh, we'll quickly be taking you back to the Osu Castle uh, when we resume uh, the the hearing okay well i'm told we are we're ready to go Before let's go back that. my lord uh, i think the, na the name has come can i ask your permission So, uh, you're still live on the Joy News channel and on Joy 99.7 FM. Uh, DSP Samuel Kujo Azugu is still giving his testimony to the Justice Emil Shot Commission of Inquiry into the Violence at IRS or West Wogan. Uh, Kujo, interesting developments. Mm. Uh, uh, like I mentioned earlier, getting interesting by the minute, and we would have to go again so we don't miss it. What was the purpose? for the mask my lord um, as a matter of fact uh, that particular operation was among a lot of operations that we have already conducted and um, as SWAT some of the men that we go on the field with are normally used as um, informants you know, within the area. They, we use them as surveillance officers, recce officers, who give us valuable information from um, areas that most of us cannot um, go. So when there's any operation and we approach a particular location where they know that they can easily be identified and you know making uh, any other subsequent operation um, not successful they you know we tend to make them to uh, use a mask to disguise themselves but it is not for any ulterior or bad motive DSP, you know that that was an election day. Am I right? Yes, my lord. And the election was taking place within the same constituency as you were going for your surveillance. Am I right? Yes, my lord. I know you are trained not to ask questions, but then let me ask you. As you sit here, would you be able to tell the commission why that particular operation had to be carried out on that day? Uh, my Lord, as I already integrated to this commission, national security always operates on intelligence that comes to the notice of officers. And on that particular day, that is on the 31st, um, where I was made to understand that there was some infiltration going on of arms and ammunition going on. And um, there, there was a surveillance which has been placed on the people who were involved in that um, nefarious activity. And at that particular moment, even though it's, that's why when we got to the location, um, the perpetrators wanted to take advantage, according to our intel, wanted to take advantage of the situation 
of that is the by election to perpetrate whatever um, intention that they had. And uh, um, that's why that they, we have to um, move and move cautiously. And I, as the leader of the team, I took into cognizance the fact that it was an election day and, you know, that day, that location too was, um, uh, there was a poli two police stations nearby. And that was why we, I was so tactical, you know, on arrival at the scene because we were not even we had not even contemplated to move. We were staying put at that location for further you know, uh, information as to whether to deploy or not to deploy, my lord. To deploy or not to deploy. Did you deploy? We, we didn't. We were only uh, in the initial stages, as I told this commission, when we arrived, there was traffic on the main street. So I took it upon myself to make sure that the area was cleared of all vehicular traffic to make easy movement of traffic. So that was when, when uh, the whole thing started. Now, DSP, from your account, you were actually in the area to carry out an operation. Did you manage to? Please. Did you manage to carry out the operation for which originally you were there? My Lord, because of the incident that occurred, we could not. So we have to abort. So then, if I heard you right, there's an intel of a stockpile of ammunition in a house. A team that included 25 policemen decided to abort it because of a certain incident. Is that so? My Lord, as I indicated due to the incident that resulted from the shooting that attracted us to the house at a point i have to use my discretion to know that when this thing was the shooting was going on it attracted a lot of onlookers and also for the fact that a police station is a, a block away from that location, I found it prudent to withdraw the men. But before that, we call for reinforcement for them to come and take over. Because maybe, when they come, their mandate may be different from us because we were coming to, but when they come, since the police come, they will secure the place so that any other further um, um, as evidence that will be available, they will secure it at the location for any possible investigations. When you talk about evidence here, would that include the stockpile of arms you were supposed to go and secure? Um, Intelligence, my lord, there is the probability that you get your intelligence right. Now, yes. subsequently, subsequently, the election we all know ended at 6 o'clock. Is that so? Yes, my lord. Did you make any attempt to go and check whether truly this stockpile of arms existed? Uh, my lord, um, 
the police, CID, the regional police command took over the premises. You know, so we did not go back there you know, as a team to go and uh, search for arms. Because before we left the scene, the reinforcement, the backup had arrived and they secured the location. Um, we would like to rise for just 10 minutes, then we'll come back. Please, DSP, please stay yes. in your seat. Yes, in my lord. Back. Yes, my lord. In about 10 minutes. Yes, my lord. Thank you so much for staying here on the Joe News Channel. Is a continuing uh, hearing of the Ayawaso West Wagon uh, Commission of Inquiry into the violence there. And um, a lot of interesting things happening in this particular testimonial hearing. And uh, DSP Samuel Kujazuga, he's commander of the SWAT unit at the National Security Secretariat, and he's been given his testimony. I'm still here with Kujo Yangson. And Kujo, I must say, it's the first time you've seen the commission take a break, a 10 minute break, while uh, someone is still giving their testimony or, or someone hasn't ended their testimony. A lot mm. of uh, peculiarities or yes. um, uniqueness to this particular hearing. Although to be fair to them, there are a number of very legitimate reasons why that might happen. Uh, from everything from a, uh, you know, a, a, a washroom break, you know, to uh, the need to either uh, verify something or that confer. has been... fair. Yes, yes. We've so been seeing a lot of that as well. Right. So there are many legitimate reasons why they would take this break. But you're right about how unique this particular um, uh, witness is and the testimony that he has provided so far uh, is. I mean, he has highlighted a number of things that even put the, into perspective some of what we've heard before. So he talks about how operationally they were sent to this location to, as it were, set up a staging area and await instructions on whether to deploy to this specific location where arms were suspected to be stockpiled. And um, while they were in this holding pattern, the incident that he refers to, the shooting, occurred, and they responded with all the events that uh, then unfolded. But as a result of that, they never actually got around to carrying out the purpose for which they were sent there. And they say that um, the, the police, the CID, then took over the premises uh, that was uh, suspected of uh, being the location of stockpiled mm -hmm. arms. Mm -hmm. But then the question remains, did the CID or the police find arms there um, when they took over the location? Um, and, and that was the point at which we mm, were when the break was indeed, was taken. Indeed. And Brian Achampong made a point earlier, and this is what I mean by how it's putting in perspective some of what we've heard before. Mm -hmm. uh, Brian Achampong admitted during his testimony that the team should have completed their mission. They should have gone back to determine whether indeed their intelligence mm -hmm. was accurate. So if Brian Achampong, the minister in charge of national security at the office of the president is saying that the team should have completed their mission then it's interesting to put that alongside what the commander of the team is saying well he he, he tells us that the regional command took over the premises so mm -hmm. we, we we may need to also find out from the regional command if they were able to conclude with that particular investigation or make any good out of the intel they received but could you uh, there are some names that have been mentioned names of members of the opposition uh, NDC, uh, DSP Azugu claims that as at the time they had gotten to the location, there was a bit of traffic and so they were trying to clear up uh, the road and move and as she said, wait for further instructions. Mm. Then they saw about uh, more than 10 motorbikes uh, with um, about some of them, three people on each bike mm. and three vehicles that were being accompanied by these Motor bikes. bikes. He tells us that MP for Ningo Pram Pram, Sam George was a part, uh, Mr. Oko van der Poel, mm -hmm. and the deputy uh, women's organizer of the NDC. Yep. 
interesting um, names that we, we, we hear here, mm. but so far we haven't heard from any of these witnesses. We would expect to hear from them soon. I, I suspect we will hear from them very soon, but you also have to put uh, everything you are hearing again into, into context. This was an election day. This mm. was the home of the NDC mm. uh, candidate in that election. No doubt there will be a lot of activity. Some of the people who were arrested by the police, we've already heard the police testify that when they were interrogated, it turned out that they were there to either organize food or you know yeah. logistics and yeah. so forth for the yeah. election. So the questions we should be asking is, all these individuals on the motorbikes and in the vehicles, is that why they were there? Were they there to help mobilize for this election? Were they there for some nefarious reason yet to be identified? What were they there for? And uh, was this team effective in determining the purpose for which they were there? Again, it brings back the issue of whether there was coordination between security agencies or not. Uh, Bakuja, let me just interrupt here, because DSP Azugu did mention that he asked these gentlemen on the motorbikes what they were doing then. They said they were coming to provide security. And he said he told them, not to do that because police and immigration officials had been deployed to do just that. That's so right. that, that, he, that answers a bit of the question as to what were they doing there. Exactly. We're yet to hear or get a response from these accused persons. It also brings up the, the continuing issue of uh, young men being mobilized by political parties for the provision of security. Uh, those who are pr pr prettily or politely referred to as vigilante groups, but actually what they tend to do is uh, more bordering on the crime of hooliganism and vandalism than, um, than vigilantism. Um, but it's interesting uh, because um, uh, we have to remember that we, we, we've seen videos mm. of the, 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 the violence meted out to uh, civilians by these uh, armed uh, or unarmed, we're yet to determine, mm. um, national security operatives. But we haven't seen the videos of these motorbikes and so forth. So if, if there are images of those, so we're certainly hoping that members yeah. of the public will bring them up mm -hmm. uh, so that we can, uh, we can add that to the body of evidence that we are all being asked to consider mm -hmm. while these uh, proceedings continue. We'll be going back to the Osu Castle shortly. Uh, but it's interesting to note that DSP Azugu has been asked to remain in his seat while... Uh, the commissioners take a break. And you, you were speaking about the issue of vigilantism, which mm -hmm. has been key in th these uh, three days that we've been uh, hearing testimonies of these people. And uh, a commissioner, Hen Madame Henrietta Mensah-Ponsu, she was quite... Professor. Professor. She was quite strong. She says that this is not vigilantism. She thinks we are watching down the situation a bit. She uses the word militia mm. and, and does mention that we must move beyond trying to deal with these vigilantes and deal with their sponsors she calls warlords. Mm. Well, and you can understand why. Uh, because for any uh, individuals who are not appointed by the state to provide security, to do so, and to do so in a way that is aggressive, not defensive, you know, to, to uh, arm themselves and go into built up communities and areas and, and cause havoc. That is actually the behavior of a militia. Mm. Uh, if the constitution hasn't established the force, then it is indeed uh, a militia, a rebel force. And so, yes, you could refer to those who command such forces as warlords mm. and it's important that we start looking at it that way so that we start thinking of preventing any of the things we've seen happen in neighboring countries from happening here very important point she made uh, now talking about how these vigilantes are trained it may not be directly linked but it, it, it raises concern I remember that Minister of State in charge of national security and the national security minister were asked about how these civilian operatives of the national security are recruited. And, well, Mr. Kandapa was not very detailed. He spoke about the fact that, well, there's, there, there's some sort of advertisement, they show interest, and, and on and on and on. But we are told that when governments change, these civilian operatives change as well. Mm -hmm. You look at it this way, the training they receive when governments change, what do they do with all the knowledge and the, and, and, and the 
training that they've received? A very important question, and it's one that really troubles security of, uh, experts and analysts. Um, because, you see, Mr. Kandapa, in his uh, testimony, was asked whether that group was actually uh, some uh, form of invisible forces or some uh, NPP. And, and I want to stop calling them vigilante groups from now on because they, are really, they really are not um, NPP security boys or whatever. And Mr. Kandapa said that they are not um, NPP uh, boys and that it is possible exactly. that some of them may have engaged in what we now refer to as vigilantism in the past, but they are not currently assigned to the NPP or they are, they are not currently uh, affiliated with the NPP as vigilantes. That was a matter of concern for me mm. because this is our intelligence apparatus, national security. Mm. You would think that at the very least they would vet those who they appoint mm. to work in this capacity, those mm. who they, they arm and send out into the public to provide us with security. They would vet them to make sure that there aren't any hooligans or vigilantes in there. Mm.